in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Steps into it. Pass is caught. Diggs! Sideline! Touchdown! Unbelievable! Vikings win it! Oh. Found that one on the old sound bar here today. Had to dust Great that call. one off. Great call by Joe Buck. You made up for the Randy he Moss did. mooning. That's a despicable act. Yep. A more a more mature, improved Joe Buck. Yep. And he, uh, I don't know, to, to like nail that in the moment too. You know, you don't know that that play is going to happen, well, and to just know exactly how to nail and, it is impressive. And al- although he uh, attempted to replicate the call when uh, I think the Cardinals beat Texas fr- from his we'll dad. We'll see you tomorrow night. The bookend of of. Um, Joe Buck calling that play and Jack Buck with the twins call. Like they're identical in the se- in in the sense that they're iconic calls with minimal words. Yep. I have no problem with him choosing to pay homage to his father. The people that were like, he's stealing from his dad. It's, it's like his dad. It's his dad. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah cool. it's but, his dad. but this call, <laughs> but like this call for the end of the Saints Vikings game to me stands out just huge because it's him. It's great doing his own call and yeah. just like his dad it's just like as few words as possible to explain one of the great moments in vikings history as opposed to twins history yep i wonder if, if in the end if vikings fans are going to be more remembering him for that call yeah, the moss one of the great cool. moments in history or if they're still pissed about the randy moss thing i don't know but uh this is purple daily daily vikings entertainment Presented by our friends at TCL, which is one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost. Learn more at TCL.com and inspire greatness with TCL. Also, a shout-out to our friends over at Federated. Federated's been around for over 100 years. Uh, They're all about equity, integrity, teamwork, and respect. That is what their corporate culture is is grounded in. And those four cornerstones create the foundation that supports all interactions and decision-making trickles into their work with your business. If you're looking for more support and a way to maximize your business, federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. We'll get to a random Viking of the week, but first, Judd Zolgad, we like to rank things around here. And Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're going through some fun sort of off-season downtime ranking episodes and we've got training camp firing up next week so this might be our last chance to just rank fun things from like vikings history until we get to the 2023 season so judd is here today with his 10 most underappreciated vikings of all time yep wow a couple of things here one i tried to keep most of them um since 2000 okay because and i i didn't see the vikings In the 60s, and I started to watch them in 78, so I certainly can start there. Uh, But the majority of guys I've got, while there's certainly some players from the 90s, there's Mm. also probably a a lot of, you know, last 20 years plus flavor as well. I'm going to start at 10. I'm going to work my way up. Number one won't surprise you. The rest of this, incredibly subjective, so feel free to chime in if you disagree because this is not like i was not trying to put together a comprehensive i'm right list it's just sort of a fun list all right when you when you say that number one won't yeah. surprise us Declan, I do you, yeah i was like i don't even know who i don't know who that number would one be. will not surprise well when i get there it's going to be like oh okay, once yeah. he starts talking or once he gets down yeah. to the three it's not going to surprise it's not going to in fact maybe you. we should write it down phil if we get to phil it. will agree phil will not only not be surprised i think he'll he'll be like oh yeah that's got to be well wow hold on let me think can I, think, can I think for a second? Well, no, I'll start, and I you don't start. want you. I don't want you to give, give it away. I'm just saying it's going to become blatantly. It's like it's one of the few on this list that I don't think that there's a debate about. All right. Okay. All right. Number ten. Number ten at the bottom of the list. I'm going to start with a, a guy whose career was derailed by a gruesome broken leg in 2009, but actually for a few years was an really outstanding and to his credit turned himself into one because he wasn't that good when he arrived middle linebacker and he played for the Vikings for, from 2003 to 2011. I, of course, I'm talking about EJ Henderson. Mm -hmm. I think in the annals of Vikings football, he, so he gets lost a bit, but if you recall before he broke his leg, he had turned himself into a hell of a player. 
yes. really good. So I'm putting him, I don't think it's too low, I'm, but, but I'm going to start him on the bottom of the list at number 10. And that was during the 2009 season, you said, right? Yes, it was in Arizona. Dece- uh, was it was it December of 2009? It was a Sunday it was, night yeah, game. Yeah, it was. I thought it was even 08. Was it 09? Wow. I thought because Jasper Brinkley, right, came in. Yeah. It was 08. Yeah, I think it was 08 because he only played oh, four games in 08. Mm-hmm. And then he came back and played 12 games in 09. Okay. But yeah, but then I would, I guess what I was going to ask is whether yeah. it happened in 08 or 09, he wasn't the oh, same buddy. guy. And I don't think he played in the 2009 NFC Championship game, right? I think I think Jasper Brinkley was in there with Ben yeah, Lieber. Yeah, that's why I thought it I that's why I thought it happened in uh 2000 and uh 9. Right. Let me You're check right. real. You're right, Judd. Uh, okay. December 6, 2009. Yep. Okay. Yep. So he yeah, was, I was there. he was out. Yep. No, that's fair. So he was <laughs> yeah. he was out if he was healthy yeah, I thought of this. Would they have won that game against the Saints? Just take away nothing else except for putting EJ Henderson in that game for Jasper it ha- Brinkley. Like, it certainly helps you, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, Jasper Brinkley turned himself into a what I would call serviceable solid player. EJ before yeah. he got got hurt was I think on a Pro Bowl track. Like he was yeah. playing really well. Yep. All right. So he is number 10. Number nine, I am going to go back to the early 90s. And we were talking about this guy. I forget exactly why Phil might have guessed it as a random Viking of the week a couple of weeks ago. But I'm going to give you Viking safety, Vency Glenn. Vency Glenn, my guy. Yeah, 92 to 94. A guy who loved the cattle company, hung out with me, 394, pounding beers, um, this guy had 14 picks in 48 games over three seasons with the Vikings. And in his first year as a Viking in 92, he actually in the finale, in the regular season finale at the Metrodome, picked off Brett Favre three times as the Vikings clinched the NFC Central with first year coach Dennis Green going against Favre, who, who had just taken over as a starter that season and first year coach in Green Bay, Mike Holmgren. Vancey Glenn, though, was a ball hawk. Um, again, not a great player, but I think he was underappreciated for what he brought during those three seasons. Yeah, I know. I just remember, like as a kid, I remember him making plays. He's a big guy too, roaming He's a around. Big safety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and big they had safety. he was a big safety, and I feel like safeties and just players in general had the big shoulder pads. I just... oh god, yeah. Oh, you go back to the nineties. Oh, those bi- those shoulder pads were awesome. Yeah, they're like they're like huge. All right. All right. Number, number eight. eight. Number eight on my list. This one won't surprise you either, I don't think. Wide receiver, 2012 to 2017. He didn't get used a ton, but when he did, he caught some important passes. Jarius Wright. So here's a stat for you. 102 of his 153 catches as a Viking went for first downs. He only started 15 of 79 games in six years. Um, but I just remember he was as reliable as it gets. He didn't yeah. screw up. He caught important passes, and yet he never really carved out a huge role. So Jerry mm-hmm. is right. I put it eight. Yeah, I mean, he was always there on third down. It was third and five. Need a quick little slant route, a little out to get you to the first down. He was always there. I am a, I'm pretty surprised, though, you have him eight. I, you I'm, think he should be higher? No. I'm Off actually list? pretty surprised that yeah, like, I would say EJ Henderson made a more of an impact than Jarius Wright personally. But that's oh, that's just that's just my that. opinion, man. I that's see just that, like dude. your opinion, Come on, man. man. Come on, man. All okay. right. yeah, I, I need to see the rest of the list start to take yeah. shape before I you yeah. Know, really and have and, a and this is here. yeah, and you could easily, to Dex's point, move guys around here, especially I think in, in the bottom half of this list. So that's not surprising. All right, number seven on my list. Another guy who was never really a star player, but he he was a guy that spent a long time here. In fact, 2007 to 17, got a lot of run and did the job every Rob. time he was asked, inside or outside on the defensive line, Brian Robison. 60 sacks in 173 games, 103 starts. He, was, he would move inside at times in the nickel. Um, he certainly could be a presence on the end. But he wasn't like it wasn't like oh he's going to the Pro Bowl. But he was another guy mm-hmm. like Wright who did everything that you asked and did it pretty damn well. Just kind of a Vikings lifer too, right? You know, yeah. and they 
wasn't he like a fifth or sixth round pick too? He was not a high draft pick. No, I kind of worked, he worked was his way in. in. Seven. Yeah, like, he was I, drafted in 07. Wow. Yeah, he was here a long time. He was in the Sidney Rice and Adrian Peterson draft. And I feel like, Judd, didn't he get cut right before the 18 season started? I believe he was yes. a training camp guy and, and I kind of felt like, feel like a bad little omen of, wow, you're going to cut a very big locker room guy. And yep. not a guy who probably had a lot left in the tank, but it kind of was uh, foreshadowing of this is going to be an underachieving season. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 60 career sacks. He could be inside, outside, like Judd said. And then he was a, a, a key contributor still as a veteran on one of the best defenses in Vikings history, the 2017 defense. He was out there as kind of a rotational defensive lineman. So let's get it. All right. Brian Robinson, number seven. Number six is a guy who, if he had to play on defense, you said the Vikings are in huge trouble. But he also, during his two stints here, especially his first one, established himself as the best punt returner in franchise history. And he was really, really good. Marcus Sherrills. He played for the Vikings from 2010 to 18. I think he signed with the Saints as a free agent after 18. Uh, that didn't work out. And he returned for part of 2019. He averaged 10.5 yards per return on 237 yeah. re returns. Um, nobody on the average return yard list above him just to be clear here, has more than 50 returns, okay? This yeah. guy had 237, and his five punt returns for a touchdown, five are a record. I contend punt returning is one of the toughest things because unlike kick returns, especially back in the day, the defense or the special teams is on you, the coverage, immediately. Marcus Sherrill's made a job that, for the most part, you are just happy if a guy can fair catch a ball well. He became a threat. Marcus Sherrill's actually makes my list. Yeah, it's like that's a job that we all kind of take for granted as football fans and media. Are like, just put just whoever, just put a guy so it back goes there. Wrong. But, but think about the the conditions you deal with. You know, just there's the wind, there's the lights, there's the defense running at you, there's just oh, catching the, an oblong thing that's spiraling down. Right. Yes. And and even like gauging. Okay, it's one thing. I, know, I used to be an outfielder playing baseball and like. Gauging a fly ball, there's like, a, okay, is it? Am I going back forward? Is it? Is the is the wind blowing it? It's like playing outfield basically yes. with an oblong thing coming down at you. If a guy could rush you, yeah. So so like you're, you're going back for a fly ball, and and if a guy could like, you no, know, if yeah. like guys, guys, multiple guys, guys are rushing the, you, and you're like, the I hitter hits the ball in the air, and then the dugout clears easy. and starts running at you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh no! All right, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right, so there we're halfway through here. We got uh, E.J. Henderson, Vency Glenn, Jarius Wright, Brian Robinson, Marcus Sherrills, and now we're to number five. Yeah, I number think my, five. I think my top five is the the order might be debatable. I don't think the guys are number five. Hmm. Again, I'm, I'm going to go back to the '90s, '96 to '99. Is the compliment to Robert Smith at running back, our guy Leroy Horde. Wow. Um. Nine rushing touchdowns and 10 total because he caught one in the 15 and 1 98 campaign, which includes the uh, play that we talked about from that Dallas Thanksgiving Day game, which was a 50 yard run. 27 total touchdowns as a Viking, 1,689 yards rushing, and a perfect complement to Robert Smith. Number five, Leroy Horde. I think I know who number one is. I'm going to write it down. I think I do too. I think you're going to be down. right and, too. And I did. Okay. Write it down. And then did we'll you write it down already? Yes. I think yes. you guys are going to get it. I think okay. so. I think you guys are going to get it. It's My a guy who wouldn't so be bad. who wouldn't be one except for a twist of fate. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Oh well, now I know who it is. It wasn't the guy I was going to say. That gave you're it away. No, I'm not. I'm not giving you. I'm not saying anything else. Number four. Number four on my list is a guy who statistically as a Viking put up some really impressive stats, although he was used throughout his time here, 2001 to five, as a third down pass rush specialist. Lance Johnstone had 41 sacks over five years, basically playing on third down. He had 10 sacks in 2003. He added 11 or I'm, I'm sorry, he had 10 in 2002. He added 11 in 2003, and yet he only started 23 of 79 games that he played as a Viking. Lance Johnstone, again, a guy who I'd be curious now what, what his statistical 
resume as a Viking look like if he had played more on first and second down, but on third down, this guy had a big impact. Is he kind of like a like a unique Ngakwe where he's he's really got one skill and it's getting up the field and getting after the quarterback, but there's a reason why he's not out there on first and second down, like running probably. downs? Probably, but I mean, like if he played now, it's more of a pass rush league. Would, would you play him more now because, or I'm sorry, it's more of a passing league, which leads to more pass rush opportunities on the quarterback. But yeah, that's fair. But he was a, he was definitely an impact guy. And this was in the era, you know, well pre Jared Allen, you guys, where yeah. you were desperate for help. Like you were looking for any type of pass rush that you could generate. So Lance Johnstone is number four. You know, it's kind of crazy about Lance Johnstone. So he is, well, I'm looking at the the official list. If you if you just take sacks leaders from like 1981 when they started tracking it, yep, he's top 100 all time in sacks. He's just ahead of he's he's 96th on the all time list ahead of Cornelius Bennett, Indamakung Su, and Daniil Hunter. Hmm. Daniil Hunter is 99th on the all time on the all time, and he's he's just behind Miles Garrett. Now okay. Miles Garrett is going to play a little bit longer here, right. but but uh, yeah, that's. A good Pretty one. company. Mm-hmm. Pretty good company. All right, number three on my list. Go back to the backfield, but a more recent vintage. Running back Chester Taylor. Mm-hmm. 2006 through 2009, okay? He was, so he, he was a backup to Jamal Lewis in Baltimore, became a free agent, signed the big contract here to take over as the Vikings' bell cow, was the bell cow in 2006 um was fortunate or unfortunate enough to have adrian peterson fall to seventh in the 2000 and what uh seven draft right became a backup but he could do everything peterson couldn't do he could catch the ball pick up pass protection um he was sort of a he he was a cantankerous surly guy but i think as far as a player he he was smart enough to be sort of a pseudo coach on the field at times because he yeah. like knew all the assignments. So Chester Taylor, um, who I think when he left the Vikings def, I think Peterson felt it. Like I think Chester did a lot of things well and Toby Gerhardt clearly didn't. Yeah. So Chester Taylor is number three on my list. And you know what's I, funny I liked him a lot as a player. They had it right, man. They had it right by just going for like a Chester Taylor type. And I'm they did. I'm not saying that they should regret drafting and you know giving the ball to Adrian Peterson three hundred times a year because He's one of the great players in franchise history, but they kind of nailed it with Chester Taylor, and then they, ah, we got to get Adrian, and they nailed it with Latavius Murray. Go find the 27-year-old good, solid running back that can get you four, four and a half yards of carry and uh, and don't break the bank, right? He had, Chester Taylor had 1,500 yards of total offense in 2006. That's pretty damn good. And oh, you're not breaking was... the bank. You're not using a first-round pick on him, you know? Yeah. But when Peterson falls... To you especially back then it becomes difficult because yeah. like back then it's like oh my god this guy is a pro bowl talent and but yeah they uh children's definitely had a pretty good idea I, I think of the direction that the game was going and the one thing that i will give chester is um peterson as far as his talent unquestionable but his ability to do things questionable yeah. chester taylor was was had turned himself by the time he came here into a really um, well-rounded, complete back, which now you would absolutely love. Then it was nice. Now it'd be, it's yeah. almost imperative. I mean, he was, you know, think about, it, it was less about the big runs and, and he had a couple of those here and there and, and he could catch some passes, but he wasn't the most explosive offensive player. But on third down, when the opposing team sends a linebacker through the A-gap, right? Hold on. Linebacker through the A-gap, Football. right? He yeah. was so much better at picking up blitzes and knowing oh, where he was God. supposed to be on third down than than uh, his young successor. That's why they took him off the field at times. Because I I think at first, until he finally switched it, Childress was, was asked we, weekly, when are you going to start Peterson over Taylor? But even after he did that, if I'm not mistaken, Chester Taylor was the third down guy. And Chester Taylor also didn't fumble as much. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah, Chester, let's see issue. Chester had, yeah, he had the, uh, five, five, you know, the most fumbles he had was five in the full season. You know, Adrian, uh, I think Adrian had more than that, like eight or nine in the really bad yes. year 
and then they made him carry a football around the facility. So yeah, and unfortunately, it didn't work against the Saints mm. in the conference championship game. All we right, two two left, and my guy is still on the board here. I yeah, on the board. I feel like I know the next two. Okay, I'm kind of in the dark. I'm kind of in the one dark of them. Here. I think is potentially. Have, have too you guys good. shared this? I, I can no. take no. my headphones off if you guys would like to share. Can you wait? Can you close thinking. your eyes real quick? Sure. Just close your eyes because so I can put this up. I'm on the covering them too, so I don't accidentally like, open them. I can't. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I, I do not have that guy. You don't? No. He has to be on there. All right, am I back? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, number two on my list. And these guys are underappreciated. Now, this guy got attention, but he did the most amount of grunt work, team guy, everything. I'm talking about tight end Jimmy Kleinsoff. Yeah, let's go. 1999 through 2011. (laughs) An H-back. So, like, and I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was Tice, not Dennis Green, who started to use him in the backfield as an H-back which was actually very, very smart. Um, but, I mean, Jimmy Kleinsaucer, you talk about a guy doing the grunt work but doing it well. Yeah. He just showed up, meat and potatoes. The football sounder applies to a guy named Kleinsaucer. He is the football sounder. Pretty yeah. I can't tell you how many times in my early Madden and even like NFL 2K5 days, I would have like a second and one or third and inch situation, and I would manually sub in Jim Kleinsaucer, Kleinsaucer on the fullback draw. I can just oh, put yeah. him at fullback. Just fullback H-back. draw, right? Right, the right, 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 right in the middle. Here. Just Love lean that. on the back of the offensive line and jump into the end zone. Football, yeah, football, yeah. Understated. Football, didn't yeah. really like to talk much, but was a nice guy. Just didn't want to talk to us much, which I guess I don't blame him. Yeah. But he he was football. He was he should have played at the he Met. Was football. He was football. He well, was, he was so he was my guy. Like he was number number one. I don't know. Well, I don't Doug, know who number one is. I feel like kind of gave it away when he just teased when he how he said it to me. Because originally, I have two guys in mind here, and you can make a case that one of these two guys for sure is potentially too good on to be underappreciated. But I have one of two guys here that I I think it's one well, of these two. This guy would have been too good, as we get to number one on the list of underappreciated Vikings. He would have been too good, but he sort of became the forgotten man when Randy Moss yes, yes was drafted. Yes. I got it. And and he's a guy that from 94 through 97. So we're talking <laughs> right before Damn. Moss okay. had more than 1000 yards receiving each season. 3 deep. 3 deep was not just a Chris Carter yeah. and a Randy Moss. Uh-uh. 3 deep was a guy that Phil and I talked to, really nice guy a couple of years back. Yeah. Jake Reed is yes. my top underappreciated Viking, which would have never been the case if Moss hadn't come along. But, you know, Jake Reed is a hell of a player, was really, really good. And I feel like he gets forgotten, especially in Vikings lore, because it's Moss, then it's Carter. Don't sleep on Jake Reed. No, that's, that's a great one. No, that's a, that's a really good. So the, Dex, that's who you were thinking of? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Who was your other one? So your other one's not on the board. Well, you, had two, you said a you? horrible twist of fate. So I kind of was like, is he going to say Corey Stringer? That's oh. where I was like, that, you said a horrible twist of fate. Yeah, now, I'm I wouldn't classify drafting twist Moss as a horrible not, twist of fate. Not, uh, no, not. Well, no, I'm saying for, for Jake Reed, because yeah. he, he was this per, perennial 1,000-yard receiver who yeah. who didn't become the second fiddle. He became the third. Yeah, I wasn't talking about actual. Yeah. And I will say, in fairness, sometimes it's made out to be like, oh, like Jake Reed was like in the middle of his prime and kind of got screwed. I mean, Jake Reed was 31 with back issues in 1998. Yeah. You know, yep. and, and he wound up playing like four more years. He went to New Orleans, and then he went back to Minnesota, then back to New Orleans. He played till he was 35, Hello, and he boy. wound up with uh, 7,000 receiving yards and whatever. So that's great. So Judd's list from 10 down to 1, E.J. Henderson, Vency Glenn, Jarius Wright, Brian Robinson, Marcus Sherrills, Leroy Horde, Lance Johnstone, Chester Taylor, Jimmy Kleinsasser, and Jake Reed, your 10 most underappreciated Vikings. Of all time. I'm sure there's all sorts of potential snubs that people can throw into the YouTube 100%. comment section. So, yeah, go for it. Hit us up with those. But um, that's a good. List. I bet we could comb through the random Vikings of the week list from like the last two years and find a bunch of potential snubs as well. Absolutely. And we're going to add another name to that list because we do have a random Viking of the week. 
coming at you here, presented in part by our friends over at Livia, helping Purple Daily losers, uh, losers, Purple Daily losers. Well, they, lose they are. They're losing weight. <laughs> in, in fact, I, I just got a note, and look at that. That's Sports Dad right there, right down forty pounds, keeping the weight off. Why? Because Livia works. In, in fact, um, Dex forwarded me a note today from a listener, David Stock, who writes a lengthy thing, but basically says. He started on the program almost two months ago, and he has currently lost 45 pounds. His goal is 140 pounds. Folks, if you're looking to lose 20 pounds or 100 plus pounds, I'm going to tell you right now, Livia works. And right now, you can get the best deal of the summer. Join today. Get 50% off your personalized program. Lose up to 10 pounds or more in your first two weeks. So like David, you get off to a great start. Guess what? The momentum gets going. And here's the best part. The weight then stays off. There's a reason why. They've been voted Minnesota's best weight loss program year after year. Livia days have arrived. It's this simple 855 go L I V E A Livia.com Livia L I V E A.com. If you're looking to lose weight, become the latest uh, person from our purple daily family to drop those unwanted pounds at Livia.com. Dex was telling me about a new manscape product that's coming out here soon. Can we talk about that? Or is that still it's like on the tease. deal? It's a little okay. tease. Be be on the lookout here from uh from our friends at Manscaped potentially coming up. But you know what? It, it, it's it's beach body season, okay? You know, we've been talking about Bennington's, we've been talking about getting out on the water, but it's also about looking good, right? You want to make sure that beard's looking good, or you're on Livia, you know, you're flexing like Judd is over there. I don't think I've ever seen Judd flex his arm before in my oh. entire life. <laughs> And that's from his friends at Manscaped. Well, look at that. He's got, show some, those, got some those definition are, there. Look at that, Judd. I've been at the health club a few times lately. You know, those those <laughs> arms are looking good. You know, making sure they're they're trimmed up with those with that nice little beard trimmer and stuff too from the front. Oh, whether it's uh, whether it's your beach bod or your beach balls, you want to make sure everyone is uh, is looking good down there. So our friends at Manscaped are offering a nice little promotion for you: twenty percent off uh, when you use the promo code Purple at checkout. Use promo code Purple at checkout. Twenty percent off all the products, whether the beard trimmer, the lawnmower. Any of those products are twenty percent off and free shipping. Twenty percent off with promo nice. code Purple at Manscaped.com. All right, boys, it is time for a random Viking of the week here on All Purple right. Daily, the weekly challenge that's sweeping the nation. Let's do it. So we um, we do losers out here, and I lost last week, which means it's Judd versus Declan. I have the clues. Judd has fifty-four all-time wins. Declan twenty-seven. And I have ten all-time wins. We we started. Declan and I teamed up for a while, and now we're on our own. So we should probably like almost create a new game with the new standings. But um, I'm gonna throw out a series of clues. You guys get up to three incorrect guesses, and you're out if you hit three incorrect guesses. You can ask me questions. I can refuse to answer. Here are some of the la- the latest, most recent random Vikings. Robert excuse, Tate. Excuse me, Phil. Can- can you talk for a second? I'm going to have to get the cable company calling me. I'll be right back. Oh, though. okay. <laughs> yes, we can do that. <laughs> okay, thank God he muted. Hello. He Go could here. have texted us that, I suppose, but yeah. he kind of. All right. Um, Robert Tate, Erasmus James, Tyrell Johnson, and uh, Darius Raynaud. Lance mm-hmm. Johnstone also making a recent appearance in Random Viking of the Week. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of good ones that we that I really didn't think of when Judd was giving his list here um, that we potentially haven't even used yet. It's always funny because like my strategy sometimes is like like last week when I did Robert Tate, we like just seldom or you brought up the ninety eight pie chart, and I was like, who is a random person I can just like go and and bring up there? Like I did the same thing with Tyrell Johnson. You sniped that no problem. Where it's just trying to figure out yeah. the names to use in our randomness passing that we well, do. Well, and we've done um, we've done ninety one of them. Over two years, do you guys? By the way, are you okay, Judd? Do we have fifteen minutes before uh, before oh, perfect. My, my guy shows up? It's absolutely perfect. perfect. Unless you guys totally train wreck this random Viking of the week, we should be able to get it done within fifteen minutes. Do you oh, guys feel pretty confident now that we're all digging up clues here? After ninety-one random Vikings, this will be the ninety-second random Viking. That there's enough random Vikings out there to keep doing this for like a couple more years. Ooh. I'd have to think about that a little bit because, like, y- yes, if you went way in the way back machine, but that's not necessarily fair to Declan. Yeah, like, it's kind of like since 1992, you know? Yeah, because if we go back to the 80s, he's not going to have a clue, and that and that's not going to make it as much fun. I think we need to talk about this because it's a valid point. Yeah, I think we're okay, like, through the season here, for sure. 100%. 100%. And also, like, the, the further we go, there's going to be players that, when we started doing this, maybe we're on the roster... 
Yep. And then we've been doing it for three years, and now yep. we're pulling guys from, from more recently. But anyhow, here's a series of clues for you guys. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. This random Viking of the week has nearly 40,000 followers on Instagram. Gives Declan an advantage there because I don't check the gram as much. Okay. You check, check threads, though. The all new threads. This random Viking of the week hails originally from Lakewood, Ohio, and earned USA Today All American honors his senior year in high school. Pretty good high school player. Okay. Okay. This random Viking of the week played college football in the Big Ten. I'll take a guess. Alex Boone. We have a guess. Robert Smith. Oh, wow. This is unprecedented. Do we get to do guesses in queue? Well, I mean, Dex went first, so... No, this is, a, this is a queue of guesses. Yes. If Declan is right, it's over. Yep. If Declan's wrong, Judd's guess moves into the queue. It's the bottom of the ninth. Okay. We'll start with Declan's guess. And it's correct! Oh! 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 No! <laughs> wow, dude. That's, that's pretty impressive. Off an Instagram following and basically like where he lived. Well, I guess he's from Ohio and you knew that. So I knew that. there we go. Yeah. Damn it. Wow. No. Oh, good job, Dex. Robert Smith was a good guess too. Declan is on the board. Declan had a little bit of a dry yeah. spell there. Uh, the first time he has won in a month and a, and a half or so since he guessed Lance Johnstone and Josh Freeman in back-to-back weeks. So. Clues are mine. Booney. Next week. Loser so, yeah, losers out. Judd's got to go uh, talk to the internet tech guy here. So we're yep. going to say goodbye here on Purple Daily. I'm out of town for a few days uh, back in the Pacific Northwest for a wedding weekend. So you guys are going to do a little feedback Friday and then uh, Monday. And we got a bunch of stuff queued up, starting with training camp press conference on Tuesday. Uh, Judd's going to be out Some there at the practice on Wednesday. Facility. Yep. It's time. I mean, we're there. The offseason's over. We basically just finished the off-season here, boys. That's why you have this right here, huh? <laughs> the SPF 50. I'm just going to have it all spraying all over me. You're gonna, are you going to be double fisting to SPF 50? That's, what, that's how I do things, you guys. That's how I do things. I don't do anything half-assed. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us here. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. Just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.